So I'm, I can only figure that somebody either that evening or more likely early in the morning was walking a dog or walking and found that wallet in the driveway and ascertained by looking at it that it was a, a, a youth wallet, not an adult, because it was not a driver's license, just an ID tag, and just ascertained that we probably knew who the person owned. So he put it in our mailbox for safekeeping, knowing that one of us would find it. And that is exactly fulfilling what it is that Luther says when he says to help our neighbor keep his property and business. That person could have taken that wallet, or he could have just taken the cash from it, but seeing the ID card was for a youngster and seeing the basketball hoop in our yard, he just assumed then that someone in our home had lost it, and he put it where we would find it. And all I can say is, whoever you were, well done, whoever you were. So, finders keepers, losers weepers is a thing. We do our best to secure someone's possessions for them, but in cases where no owner can reasonably be found, well, then the treasure, small or large, becomes a gift we can thank God for and we can put to good uses. And oh, by the way, that little parable is often misinterpreted, I think. The usual explanation is that the kingdom of God is so precious that we should be prepared to give everything in order to gain that kingdom. The problem with that explanation, though, is that we don't earn, buy, deserve, or find the kingdom. It is given to us by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And that's the gracious work of the Holy Spirit. I think Jesus is the one who has found a treasure. And I think the treasure is you and me. I think Jesus was willing to give everything down to the last drop of his lifeblood so that he might buy us back from the devil. That's why we call him our Redeemer. He gave everything in order to buy us back, and he did so in joy because he valued us as his treasure. There are numerous places in the Old Testament where the Lord talks about Israel as his treasured possession. And by, by the fact that Christ came and that we're now the new Israel, we are that treasured possession. So I think in Jesus' kingdom, he gave all that he had for our sins and to claim us as his own scarred and bent as we are by sin. He loved us with a love that we can never fathom, bought us at a price that we can never estimate, and he gives us a kingdom beyond our knowledge. We were the losers and the weepers, but through Jesus Christ we are found and kept, and that is our joy. Amen. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have found us, that you have claimed us, that Jesus thought that we were worth the effort, worth the price, and that he's redeemed us and bought us back. We didn't deserve that. We couldn't earn that. We don't look much like a treasure. And yet, in your estimation, we are that treasure possession. And we thank you for that and pray that we might always live up to that expectation. Father, grant us your grace today. Watch over our loved ones wherever they might be. And we commend ourselves into your care, all in Jesus' name. Amen. So VBS is done. And Pastor and I want to give thanks to everybody that made VBS a special experience that it was. And special thanks to Pastor Woods, to Helen Bohannon, to Mitzi Lyon-Schmelz, to Joan Longest, Amy Meyer, Ben Wee Miller, Kathy Scheibelhut, the kitchen crew, and everyone else who helped bless the children for whom all that work was done. And so thanks to everybody for whatever part you may have played in making it a wonderful experience for the kids. Um, remind you that Frankenmuth bus trip registration is open and that's by July 10th, I've got to have registrations here. If I have any seats left then, I'm gonna send letters to our local sister congregations and fill the bus. So if you want more information, it's in News and Tidbits, it's in the uh, on the website and you can always call Karen and ask if there's still some room. So God bless you and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.